Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow Industrials uh, finish up 11. NASDAQ was up 15. S&Ps up two and a half. Bottom line, after the market closed, folks, Google come out with numbers. Google closed at a price point out here of 1287. It's trading down 50 bucks at 1237. So bottom line is going to be a lot of action out here. But first, folks, we are going to basically get into the cannabis business. You know, we talk a lot around here about canopy or Aurora cannabis, about Tilray. Uh, well, we have a great guest out here for you today. We have Nancy Whiteman. Nancy is the founder and CEO of Warner Brands, folks. Warner Brands is the number one edibles producer in the United States of America. Nancy, welcome to, welcome to TFNN. Thank you so much, Tom. Great to be here. I'll tell you, I, you know, I, I'm not quite sure where I want to start here, but I guess we can start at the aspect of um, edibles in general, right? Um, how do you know how much THC is in an edible? It, it t so tell us about how an edible works. Okay, well, an edible basically is uh, one of many ways of consuming cannabis. And the reason that it's really growing in popularity so much is that many people really prefer not to smoke. So it's definitely a, a very popular form of ingestion. Um, we actually uh, have tested our products right from the very beginning. As you said, we are the number one brand in the United States, and we've been around since 2010. Okay. Currently getting ready to launch in Florida. But what we do is we use a tincture, and the tincture is tested by a third-party lab, so we know exactly how much uh, THC is in the tincture. We then make the products and then we test them again so that we can be absolutely sure that the dosage that we say is on the um, on the product is what's what the person will be getting. And how the, the folks, you know what's interesting about this is that, you know, we follow these marijuana stocks and they've been very successful. And when up in Canada, they didn't have the edibles right away, and that, that's when Canopy, you know, they, they still did all right, but they didn't make as much money as they did. Specifically, exactly what you just said, that people like the edibles, evidently, because they don't want to smoke. How, do people, how would people know, like, how much THC to take inside an edible? How does that work? That's actually a really great question, and we have kind of a, a mantra that we use here that says, uh, start slow and go low. Okay. So what we recommend is that for people who are new to edibles, that they start with a pretty modest dose, usually about five milligrams or less. Then they wait an hour, they see how they're feeling, and then if they feel like they're not uh, getting the effect that they're looking for, then they can try a little bit more. But the thing to remember about edibles is that they do metabolize through the liver, so they take about an hour for the effect to be felt. Okay, so when Let's, yeah, let's pitch you. You have all the dispensaries, right? And in your case, uh, well, you're across the country, but in Colorado, like in Florida, it's a medical. Colorado, it's recreational. Mass, it's recreational now. Um, how does this work? When you're making them, are you selling them to these large companies like I'm talking about, or are you selling to dispensaries business-wise? <laughs> Well, we're selling them to dispensaries. Disp legal uh, licensed dispensaries are the only legal way for us to sell our product. Right. Now, some of those dispensaries have turned into larger organizations because they have formed chains and, and they're now somewhat bigger. But everything happens within the state. The cannabis has to be grown, the product has to be produced, and it has to be sold all within the state. Nothing well, can cross state lines. That's interesting. So how are you going to work this out um, in Florida? How does that work? You so we have a partner. Yeah, we have a partner in Florida. Okay. That uh, actually is going to be producing the product for us using our proprietary uh, brand and intellectual property, and then they will be distributing it through their dispensaries. Now I know in here child resistance packaging. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. One of the big fears that people have about edibles is that uh, it'll get into the hands of children. And uh, states like Colorado that have now been doing it for a long time have some very robust rules in place. Uh, we have testing, which we talked about before. We also have child-resistant packaging. And that means not only is it child-resistant when you get it, it's also reclosable and child-resistant. And these are two of the key reasons why 
having a legal edibles market is really a much safer alternative than not allowing edibles at all. Because people want edibles, they are going to make them at home or they're going to buy them on the black market. And then those safety features like testing for potency and child resistant packaging will not be in place. Yeah, it seems that the, the market in general, meaning that if I go back for like five years ago and then we'll fast forward to now, it seems like you have the aspect that there are so many black markets of everything inside states that have already gone medical. I mean, they're, they're actually, it, it seems that uh, uh, the, the market itself is trying to copy the legal market. Are, mm -hmm. are, you, are you seeing that? Absolutely. In fact, I've seen my own brand counterfeited, which of course really? is very upsetting. But absolutely, um, this is why it's really important to have robust regulations around edibles, but to create a pathway for legal edibles, because they're not going away and they will be taken up by the black market if we don't uh, give people a good alternative for that. Yeah. Now, I'm on your website. So you, your, your website, um, we get, it's Wanda. Hold it. Wanda Brands. WandaBrands.com, folks, okay? Um, Wanda. Yeah. Wanda. Wanda. Yeah, marijuana. I like it. Okay, totally. Totally. <laughs> so is, the, is, is there a, a certain edibles that people like versus, you know, what's your, what's your most famous one? So we are most famous for our gummies. And actually, gummies are not only the most popular edible uh, for us, but they're the most popular edible in the country. Uh, they they command something like 32% of the entire edibles market. And so we have the number one gummy in the country, um, but that is the most popular category. Yeah, I got it up right here. Okay, pretty cool. Now, and we talk, it, we, we're talking about stamping. So the stamping, uh, t tell the folks what the stamping means. Okay, so what, what uh, happened about, I think this was about three and a half years ago in Colorado, is that to increase the safety of the edibles even more, uh, a new regulation was passed that basically said every edible has to be stamped or marked in some way with a THC symbol. So that uh, if, if uh, somebody was picking it up, they would know that it had THC sure. in it. Or if a child accidentally uh, ingested it, that a first response might know that it THC. Well, listen, this is great. I really look forward to having you on again. Uh, folks, this is Nancy uh, Whiteman. She's the queen of legal weed. I like that name. And the Mott, the steward of edibles. That's a beautiful thing, totally. Listen, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to having you on again. Thanks so much, Tom. Thanks, Nancy. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.